everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be learning about theoretical and experimental probabilities. So we're going to take a look at this simulation and here we have a spinner that has four different colors um, and theoretically we would expect or the expected probability of landing on this blue color here would be one out of four because we have four different colors and there's only one way of getting this blue. So the theoretical probability or the expected probability of landing on a blue is one out of four or 25%. And it's the same theoretical probability that we would have for the yellow, the red, and the cyan as well. So each of these has a theoretical probability of one fourth or 25%. So now let's watch what happens when we spin the spinner 10 different times and we see what happens to our experiment. So we can see that every time the spinner lands on a different color, it changes the count to increase so it lands on a blue again. So it's just changing every time that it lands on it. And the experimental probabilities are changing as well as you continue through the experiment. So this is what we would expect to happen, the theoretical probabilities, and this is what's happening in our experiment. So now that we finish those 10 different trials, because each one of the spins is considered a trial, we now see our experimental probability. So we have an experimental probability of landing on a blue 50%. That means half of the times, because we landed on it five times, out of 10. So that means half the time we landed on a blue. So how do we get these experimental probabilities is what we do is we take the count that we had. So it was five for the blue and we divide it by the total number of trials that we did in our experiment, which is five over 10, which is why we get 50%. And then for the yellow, there were, if we look at the yellow now, um, we had two yellows out of 10 which two divided by 10 gives us 0 0.2, and we want that as percentage, which is why it's 20%. So these are the experimental probabilities and how we can calculate the experimental probabilities. But theoretically, we're exposed to expect that um, each one of these colors lands an even amount of times because it's a fair spinner, and theoretically, they each have a probability of 25%. So notice that these numbers are not very close to this theoretical probability. So the reason for that, and we learned that um, in the last video, is that when we increase the number of uh, trials, that's when we get closer to the theoretical probability. So we have to do this experiment multiple times in order for our numbers to get even close to what the theoretical probability should be. So now let's watch what happens when we run this simulation again, and instead of doing 10 spins, let's increase the number of spins to 50 spins. So here are the new results when we had 50 different spins, and we can also see what the experimental probabilities are in comparison to the theoretical probabilities. Now let's just recap on how we can get this 20% here. So if we're gonna write this out properly for any probability, we always write it like this. We have P and then in parentheses, we put in the parentheses um, the event that we're looking for. So in our case, the event that we're looking for is the blue. So when does the blue event happen? So then we make a fraction that the number on top has to be the number of times that it occurred and it landed on the blue 10 times. So we're gonna write on the top 10. And then on the bottom, we're gonna put in the number of trials that we did in this experiment. So in our case, we did 50. So now we have 10 over 50. So the probability of getting a blue is 10 out of 50. And if we want to put this as a percentage, then we would do 10 divided by 50 multiplied by 100, which gives us 20%. So now if we compare um, the results that we got when we did 50 different trials versus, uh, sorry, 10 different trials, we can see like, look at these experimental probabilities. We said that the percentage of getting a blue was half of the amount of time, even though we know it should really be 25% of the time. So when we increase the number of trials to 50, now notice that um, the experimental probability for the blue is now 20%, which is a lot closer to 25% than 50 was to 25. So, and then here, the cyan was 10% of the time. Um, so if we look now, we can see the values of a new experimental probability. And these numbers for the experimental probability are a lot closer 
um, to the theoretical probability. And again, if we increase the number of trials that we do, then the experimental probability will even more look like our theoretical probability. So let's see what happens when we reset the simulation and now do 1,000 different trials. So if we spin that again and we skip all the way to the end, we get these numbers for our experimental and theoretical probabilities. So let's compare this. So with 10 trials, these were our experimental probabilities and they weren't very close to the theoretical. So again, notice this 50% compared to 25% is what we should expect. And then we, when we increase the number of trials to 50, these numbers were starting to look a lot closer to 25%. And then as we increase even more to a thousand different trials, these numbers are getting even closer to 25%. So now this is the furthest number away that 23 to 27 whereas before we had a range of 20 to 20 to, sorry to 38 when we wanted to get to about 25. so we can see how increasing the number of trials makes this experimental probability a lot closer to the theoretical probability so these are the results of doing this experiment 1000 different times so this is our experiment, but we can also make a prediction. So let's say before we even did our experiment, we could predict how many times we would get for each color. So that's called our expected. Actually, instead of expected, we can talk about a predicted amount. So if we wanted to predict um, the number of blues, for example, if we were to do 1,000 different trials. So if we wanted to make that prediction, we would first have to use the theoretical probability, so theoretical, and what we would do is we would take one out of four as the probability of landing on a blue, because there is one way to get the blue out of the four different colors. So now, if we wanted to predict how many times we would land on the blue if we were to spin it 1,000 times, we would take our probability and multiply it by the number of trials that we were to do so in our experiment. So now we would have 1 over 4 times 1,000, which would help us figure out um, how many times we would land on the blue. So we would get 250. So our expected amount or our prediction, so we can predict that we would land, we would land on the blue 250 times. Now, this is our prediction, and then we, when we actually do the experiment, we see that we landed on it 231 times. But we can also use our theoretical probabilities to help us make predictions, just similar to statistics when we did those expected amounts from samples to determine what an amount would be for a population. So. Let's change color here. So again, if I had 50 different trials, well, what's the expected amount from the theoretical probability? So if I had, let's say now let's do yellow. So if I had the probability of getting a yellow is equal to one out of four, and I wanted to figure out if I spun it 50 times, so times 50, um, and that would give me my expected amount of um, landing on a yellow. So I would do 50, I could do 50 divided by 4, which is 12.5. So that would mean I would make a prediction of landing on the yellow about 12 to 13 different times. And we can use that prediction and we can compare it to what we actually got. So we got 10, which is kind of ish close to the 12 to 13 that we predicted. So to summarize, um, if we increase the number of trials, we get closer to the theoretical probability. Um, to find the probability of any event theoretically, we would take the number of ways to get an outcome and divide it by the total number of outcomes. If we were to figure out the probability of an experiment or an experimental probability, it would be the probability of the event is then the number of times the event happens divided by the total number of trials of your experiment. And then the last thing that we kind of talked about was we can use theoretical probabilities to make predictions of how many times we would expect to see something happen.